my family were, just my whole world. It took a really long time for me to even think about how I was going to tell them. Like, it, literally, sleepless nights for years. Like, you'd wake up in the middle of the night and just think, this is the worst thing ever. There's nothing, not, nothing's worse than this. This is what I used to think in my head. I didn't think there would be a life for me. So I moved away to become my own person. I knew that I was doing it for a reason. I knew I was doing it so that give myself a bit of time. I could just say to them, this is who I am, this is how it is. I hope that you will accept it. But at least I knew that if they didn't, it wasn't going to end up with me killing myself. It's not a choice. Growing up in school, about 12, 13, I kind of realised that I might have been attracted to the same sex. Um, but I also knew that I'm a traveller, so I, this can't be right. So I, I, I tried to like go out with traveller girls and see girls and stuff like that. But then I, I would just be so unhappy. I was at a real crossroads in my life that I almost took my own life. And I think seeing my mum and dad cry was the most hurtful thing because suicide leaves a legacy of guilt for those that don't understand it. And I love my family more than life itself. Um, but at the time, that was the only way I could see out. Deep down, my mum knew. She may not have wanted to have accepted it, but she knew the day was going to come that I was going to say that I was gay. And my dad was sat on a crate outside the back door, smoking a fag, coffee in his hand, and he just looked up and he said, you're right, my son, and just winked like that. And I just thought, mum's told you, and that's your reaction. And I then spoke to mum and she said, yeah, I told you, dad. And he just said, I knew. I knew this day was coming and they were accepting about it. We've never spoken about it since and that's the, the thing. My uh, dad's always been quite open but we've never discussed the being gay. It's not been discussed, it's just been part of my life. I've been lucky because I've not faced any real direct discrimination or prejudice for being gay from my own family. What I have experienced is silence. So people are just not, they just don't talk about it. Um, and I can sort of live with that because you can, you can formulate another group of people around you, work colleagues, friends, non-travellers, who you can talk about issues with. It wasn't the case that 50 years ago there were no gay travellers. There were plenty of gay travellers. They were just too ashamed and uh, too intimidated by society as a whole to come out. That's changing. And it's got to change. And we're seeing that, you know, we saw, I think, Huey Mon win Big Brother and come out as a gay traveller virtually live on TV. You know, that is groundbreaking. And we need more instances of that. Now I'm confident and proud of my sexuality, but when I was 15, if I could have chosen to not be the way I am, I would have. I'd watched my parents not really understand gay people, never associate themselves with um, gay people. I, in some regards, say homophobic remarks, and I've listened to that my whole life, but I think because I had a TV show to go away to for a certain amount of time, and I was also, but then I was 21, I was nearly 22. And then when I came home, my parents were absolutely fine with that. Over the moon, happy that I was doing things I wanted to do from a personal life. My biggest fear was telling my, my daddy. He surprised me beyond anything I can ever, ever have imagined. When he found out and he rang me and he just spoke to me probably for the longest conversation we've ever had in my life. He just said, I don't care what anyone says about this, you'll be completely protected if anyone ever says anything. My sexuality is part of me. I have loads of friends, both gorgeous and traveller friends. Nobody's ever 
negative about my sexuality. Yes, we'll have the odd joke, you know, but it's never said in any, any malice, no more than what I would say something to them. And whether it's because of the influence of my parents and my family or my friends, I do feel comfortable in who I am. I have no regrets, really, in my life. I've lived a decent, good life. There's too much pressure on everyone, in all of, especially young people in our community, to, to fit into boxes. We just need to start accepting maybe that, that we're all a little bit different. We need to stop worrying about what other people say. We need to stop this taboo of we can't talk about relationships, we can't talk about being gay, we can't talk about problems that we're having. The amount of services I've approached and I've just hit a brick wall is unbelievable. I had one person say there isn't no gays in that community. Like, are you for real? There's over half a million travellers in this country. Shame is a big issue. So safety is really an issue. We don't have the councillors. The councillors that we place out in local areas are not based in traveller organisations. They're based in a separate location to traveller organisations because you don't want to be bumping into your, into your kind of one of your relatives or somebody saying, oh, what are you doing here? So you need to make it safe for people to come to, for starters. Things are beginning to shift here where, you know, certainly the groups, all the travel groups, trying to push on the issue, you know, and open up spaces in the community for them discussions to happen. And that's the way change takes place, you know, it's true awareness. Report Racism GRT is a dedicated website for gypsies and travellers to report any incidents of hate crime. My main message to my own community would be to come out and support our LGBT people. Um, they go, go through racism the same way we do, double racism, and they need our support. And I've tried to do, do the best for people because I always think, you know, we need to do to others what we would hope they do to us. Being LGBT and, and Catholic can, can most definitely be, be reconciled. I'm not saying it's easy, but I think uh, there certainly are some wonderful examples of gay Catholics, uh, not so many yet of transgender Catholics, but I'm sure there will be. Um, so I would definitely say that it's, it's not only possible, but, but desirable that we have good examples of, of uh, people who accept both their sexual orientation and are full members of the church. <laughs> when I wake up each day, I know that I'm loved, I'm popular at university, like I have so many good people around me, an amazing family, and you know what, I'm happy. You can never push somebody to come out because it's such a personal thing shouldn't be the definition of somebody or your judgment on them. But coming out is something that is a person's own personal journey and they will do it in their own time. But you can't, I suppose, force somebody to do it. I'd just like for there to be more conversations around healthy relationships, regardless of whether it's same-sex relationships or whatever it is. Just being in a position where we can talk more openly about it is definitely something I feel needs to happen. If you want to find out about services, go to www.travelermovement.org.uk.